Ladies and gentlemen, I have spent the last month rewatching every single SummerSlam main event that there's ever been. And before y'all ask, this is not wine. It is actually sparkling apple grape juice, as I am legally not allowed to drink until the 20th of this month. But, um,. Yeah, I've watched a lot of wrestling over the last month. And we're going to rank every single one of them in this video. <laughs> Diesel versus Mabel. Oh, God. You think you know me? What up, YouTube? Welcome to Raid M Wrestling. This is your boy, Mo. So, like I said in the intro, we're going to rank every single SummerSlam main event of all time. So, there's been a total of 34 of them. Before we get started, drop in the comments. Let me know what you think is the greatest SummerSlam main event of all time. Don't forget to like, comment, share, subscribe. We're on the road to 10K, man. Let's get into this. So as we get into this, let's go over our tiers. We got the GOAT tier, Fire, Sunlight, Mid, and the infamous Aseline tier for the worst of the worst, man. So we're going to get started with the very first SummerSlam main event where it was the Mega Powers meeting the Mega Bucks. Hogan and Savage versus Ted DiBiase and Andre the Giant. Um, honestly, I went into this not expecting very much, but this is actually a pretty entertaining match for what it is, especially knowing what era it's in. Usually, 80s matches aren't as entertaining as this one was for me, but the crowd was probably what made it for me. The action was actually not too bad. Um, DBS was really carrying their side, obviously, because Andre was more or less on his last legs. But yeah, I think Hogan and Savage and DBS did their thing. And then the crowd, of course, made up for it. So honestly, I would put this in the some lights here because I was wildly entertained by the whole thing. Now, as for the next year, we have another match involving Hogan and Savage, but uh, on opposite corners, we had Hogan and Brutus Beefcake versus Randy Savage and Zeus, a.k.a. Debo. So honestly, this match was very, very slow. A lot of the same moves, especially from Zeus, who wasn't, obviously, he wasn't a wrestler. So, it just, it's not for him to be carrying matches. Savage did what he could. Hogan did what he could. Brutus Beefcake did whatever Brutus, Be Be uh, blah, blah, Brutus Beefcake does. But, uh, honestly, I, would, I wouldn't say this is a horrible match. It just wasn't what last year, the year before was, to be honest. So, I'm going to go ahead and put this one in the mid tier. Uh, this was exactly what you would imagine an 80s match looking like. It just wasn't wasn't up to par to what of what last year was or what a lot of these other ones on this list are going to be. So, yeah, mid-tier for this one. So then now we move on to SummerSlam 1990 where we had Ultimate Warrior versus Rick Rude in a steel cage match. And again, it's uh, it's not for me per se. It's just it was really it's a really basic match. Rick Rude did what he could, but Warrior wasn't always an in-ring technician. You know, he had he had decent matches here and there, but this one wasn't one of those memorable matches. It just for me, this goes solidly into the mid tier. Um, I would put it. I don't even know if I'd put it above or under Savage and the, the last one. So I just I would just put it in the mid tier and leave it at that. I didn't really enjoy this one that much. But again, it's not the worst, the worst. Now, the worst of the worst, well, not all the way, completely the worst thing I've seen, but so far, this is the worst one. It's the match made in hell, and it was rightfully tagged, so, because it was hell getting through this match. It was Hogan and, Sa uh, excuse me, Hogan and Warrior versus S Sergeant Slaughter, General Adnan, and Col uh, Colonel Mustafa, and the, the S Slaughter and... Mustafa and Adnan, they were way past their primes. It's just the match was the match was slow. It was boring. A lot of the same moves. Nothing special. Hogan and Warrior weren't going to carry these guys to a classic or any, anything even decent. So, honestly, this is going to be our first Aseline. I'm going to be honest. It just wasn't it, just, it wasn't a good match at all. I'm, I'm really sad that this main event is really hell. They could have had Brett and Mr. Perfect main event this one. This was This was not it. Now, this next match is one of those matches that everyone talks about as one of the greatest matches of all time, as one of the greatest SummerSlam matches of all time. And to be honest, it's as good as advertised. This is one of those matches I believe you should at least watch once in your life if you haven't already, because it 
if you want to remember how good Bret Hart really was, just watch this match. Because story goes that British Bulldog was completely out of it. He didn't. He was actually high, I guess. He wasn't actually there mentally. And he was completely gassed. But Bret carried him all the way through the finish. He didn't know. You know, Bret called the whole match in the ring. It was. And for, for what it was, it not even just for what it was for it was just a fantastic match back and forth action well told story baby face uh, it was just a pure baby face match and honestly one of the greatest ic title matches of all time without question i think it's fair to put this one in the goat tier i think putting it any lower would be doing an absolute disservice as a match <laughs> now this next one is one of those matches i think well, honestly, it's going to go in the Aseline tier just to be just to be quite honest with you. But it is very funny because Lex Luger and Yoko had one of those clunky, boring matches that the mid 90s was known for. And then Lex Luger wins the match, but by count out, yet he celebrates like he just won the WWF title. It's one of the funniest, most ridiculous moments in SummerSlam history. Like, why are you celebrating? You you technically lost. You didn't win the belt, bro. Your main goal was to win the championship, and you didn't do it. Why are you so happy, dog? Waving the American flag and shit. <laughs> yeah, but for what it is, the match was not good at all. So, yeah. Aseline tier for sure and now we got another one that goes in the Aseline tier honestly Undertaker versus fake taker like under faker I should call him it's just <laughs> completely ridiculous terrible story not believable at all the match was clunky like ugh. taker wasn't the ring general he would end up being just yet so he couldn't carry this guy to apparently who I've, I've heard correct me if I'm wrong in the comments was actually his cousin but I don't I'm not 100 percent on that. Don't don't quote me on that. But yeah, no, this this definitely goes in the Asseline tier. I think it's honestly the top of the Asseline tier is better than Lex Yoko and then the match made in hell. But yeah, that's not saying much. This next one, I just I don't I don't even feel like talking about it much. It's Diesel versus Mabel. You've heard about this match if you haven't seen it yet. And if you have seen it, you know exactly what I'm talking about. This is, without question, the worst SummerSlam main event of all time. I don't think it's even arguable to go in any tier higher than this. this is one of the worst matches of all time, period. It's just a complete waste of your time. If you haven't seen the match, don't. It's not even like bad that it's funny. It's just a bad match. When Kevin Nash is the most, and I love Kevin Nash, don't get don't get this fucked up. But if when Kevin Nash is the most agile guy in the ring, you've got problems. And in the middle of the match, you saw Mabel sit on Kevin Nash's back, and you can hear Nash fucking screaming in pain. I don't think they've edited it out of the network. He was, it was just a bad match. Mabel wasn't made for the main event. I don't know why they let this main event SummerSlam. The, the mid 90s it was a hot mess and this is prime example of that so again to any of you fans that watched in the mid 90s and are still fans to this day salute to you because I, I i wouldn't have been able to obviously worst SummerSlam main event of all time N not even a question for me dog and i'm i'm gonna take a drink good lord i want my time back michaels versus vader in 96 i don't really yeah, I did. I obviously watched it recently, like I said in the intro, but it's like not very memorable. Um, I'm going to put it in mid. I remember it being better than the first two in the, in the mid tier, the 89 and 90. I just, you know, Vader was made to look like a bum. And then there was that spot where Sean got mad at Vader for not selling something properly. I believe it just wasn't it just wasn't good. It, it could have been so much better considering who these two guys are. If you've seen, everyone knows how good Shawn Michaels is, but Vader is so slowly becoming one of those underrated legends of the past, and he's really as good as a lot of people say he is. It's just, if you haven't seen the best of Vader, go watch some of his Japan stuff. But yeah, this this wasn't it. So now we got one match that is one, it's before my time, but I really, really appreciate what it did. It's 
Hart versus Soul. It's Undertaker versus Bret Hart. It's Shawn Michaels, a special guest referee for the WWF title. At SummerSlam 97, personally, I, this is going to be the first one in the fire tier. Um, the match itself was okay. It was pretty good. Not like nothing groundbreaking. But I think it's the finish that honestly vaults it into the fire tier for me. You know, Shawn smacking Undertaker in the head with a chair. It led to the Hell in the Cell, the first ever Hell in the Cell match, which had Kane's debut. Obviously, Montreal. A lot of people can easily see this as like the jumping off point for the Attitude Era. So, and you know, everyone knows how big the Attitude Era ended up being for professional wrestling as a whole. So, just for that and its cultural and impact on pro wrestling, I think it's only fair to put it at least in the fire tier. If not, you can easily argue it for the GOAT tier as well. Uh, another match I believe belongs in the fire tier. It's Stone Cold versus Undertaker and probably their best match ever. They don't really have much chemistry usually, but this one actually worked for me. It was a highway to heaven, uh, 98 stone cold was on fire. You know, the, the story with Taker and Kane, are they, are they in cahoots or whatever? And then it ended up being a very good match. If you haven't seen it, I would, I would, I would go watch. I'd recommend it. It's pretty, pretty solid match, but yeah, fire tier. I enjoyed it for what it was. So the last SummerSlam main event of the nineties was triple H stone cold and mankind. Uh, story goes, no one's actually clear on this. It was either Stone Cold didn't want to put over Triple H or Jesse Ventura didn't want to, who was running for governor, I believe, didn't want to raise the hand of a heel. Um, I don't know exactly which story is true, but personally, for me, it doesn't matter. The match itself was, it was a good match, nothing too crazy or too memorable, but it was not a bad main event at all. I would put this in the some light tier, but personally below the very first SummerSlam main event. Uh, but yeah, I didn't, I did enjoy this match for what it was a solid triple threat match, but nothing too crazy, nothing too memorable. So now we pick it back up with a really great triple threat match. It was triple H the rock and Kurt angle. <laughs> this is a match where Kurt angle. It's not, that's not funny, but you know, Kurt angle got concussed, but they still dragged him out there. Cause they didn't know back then how to handle concussions and stuff. But you know, this was one of those great. The, the, honestly, SummerSlam 2001 as a whole was all-time great. So I'm going to put this one in the very top of the fire tier. Uh, very good triple threat match. Very enjoyable. Great story being told between Triple H and Kurt Angle. Uh, and then The Rock's addition to it. Just He was the biggest star in the company at the time. Austin was out, so The Rock was number one. It added a lot to that. So, yeah, num uh, this, is, this is definitely in the fire tier for me. So now we move on to personally my favorite SummerSlam of all time. Uh, mainly because it happened five days after I was born. So it is Brock Lesnar versus The Rock in their only ever match. And I personally am going to put this in the GOAT tier. It was not the not the crazy thing is not even the best match on the card. That's That goes to show you how great the show was. But the athleticism on, on display by Brock and The Rock. <laughs> a lot of rhyming. He's trying saying that like five times less. But yeah, Brock Lesnar and The Rock did their thing they killed it very enjoyable the crowd was into it the crowd even turned on the rock at one point um some were cheering him some were cheering him but it was still like it wasn't like they were in montreal but they were turning on the rock siding with brock lesnar and then brock you know picking up the win becoming the first like not the first ever but the youngest ever uh wwe champion at the time great story being told great moment for brock what a way to close out probably the greatest SummerSlam of all time. So, yeah, go tier for me. <sighs> now, this one is a match. I don't know. Is it, it, it started very promising, and then its finish just deflated the hell out of it. It was the Elimination Chamber match between Triple H, Shawn Michaels, Goldberg, Kevin Nash, Chris Jericho, and Randy Orton. Yes, there we go. I remembered all of them. And Goldberg just went in there and destroyed everybody. This was this was potentially going to be Goldberg's greatest moment in WWE. Cause up to this point, they hadn't booked him that well, but this this fixed everything. And then towards the end, they broke all of that with Triple H hitting him with only one sledgehammer shot to win and deflate all of it. And honestly, for that, it, if it wasn't for that, it definitely would have gone in the fire tier. But I can't I can't go higher than the top of mid for me. It just that that finish deflated it, it ruined everything. It it just killed everything. That was the dumbest way to go. But 
the match preceding the finish was fantastic. So now we got a match that really isn't talked about anymore uh, for obvious reasons. It's Chris Benoit versus Randy Orton in Randy Orton's first world title win. And for the match itself, I would put it in the some light tier. It was a very solid main event. Nothing, nothing particularly crazy about it, but um, Benoit and Orton were both very good technical wrestlers. Not technical wrestlers, but very good wrestlers. Chris, Chris Benoit in his own right was a good technical wrestler, but like Randy did his thing. Chris did his thing. Just wasn't, you know, all-time Pantheon great main event. It was just really solid. You know, it's not talked about much, but it was Orton's moment. And, you know, the crowd was on his side. It was a very, it was a very solid match here. Not, not much to say. <laughs> oh, man. If you haven't seen the video where I talk about SummerSlam 2005, it's going to be over there on that side. Check it out when you're done with this video. <laughs> we got Shawn Michaels versus Hulk Hogan in possibly one of the funniest main events of any show ever it i don't even care i'm putting this in the top of fire tier putting it in go tier is a little bit too blasphemous but man was this funny like sean flopping around like Le prime lebron james making hogan look like an idiot if you want me to go more in depth about this match again check that video out but yeah i can't i can't put it in goat tier as funny as it is but yeah fire tier at least i don't care if it's yeah it's the top of fire tier i don't care what anyone says so now we got edge versus john cena and honestly a good match but it's they've they've had better they had better after this the tlc match um the last man standing match you know they've had a bunch of better matches than this but this is still a really good match it goes to show you how good their chemistry is together so i'm gonna go ahead and put this at the very top of some light uh again good match good result edge should have won you know make him look strong but yeah good match they've just had better i just realized i accidentally skipped booker t in the rock but honestly uh not much i'd write home about it just it was the result was very obvious the rock was clearly gonna win i'm sure if you were watching it live back then you obviously predicted the rock was gonna win it's a good match just nothing crazy i'm gonna put it at the very top of mid it was, it was okay it was not anything substantial but yeah so now we got john cena and randy orton and i believe their very first pay-per-view match and for what it was i would put it on the same tier as cena and edge the year before uh i'd say it's a little bit less in terms of quality um but it's still a very good match it's one of their best, which, again, supports my case that it's the most overrated rivalry in WWE history. Don't at me. But, yeah, some light. Not a bad match at all. Very good. Probably one of their best. But, yeah. Now we get another one that definitely belongs in the GOAT tier. It is Edge and Undertaker and Hell in a Cell. What a way to close one of the greatest feuds of the very late Ruthless Aggression era. Edge and Undertaker went in there and kicked the absolute hell out of each other. Lots of memorable spots. The choke slam through the ring, just what a match. And then Taker lighting Edge on fire. We all thought Edge was dead. He lives. He's still around. But yeah, what a, what a great hell to sell match. I can't do this match justice personally. Just just go watch it. If you haven't watched it before, just watch it, bro. Now we got probably personally my favorite SummerSlam main event of all time because it's part of one of my favorite feuds of all time: Jeff Hardy versus CM Punk. And the TLC match, I thought so many great spots. These guys deserved the main event after telling probably the greatest story of 2009. It just, what a way for Jeff to go out in terms of pay-per-views before he uh, he left for eight years. It was the swanton off the ladder. It's so many memorable spots, bro. So many. I'm definitely 100% putting this in the GOAT tier. Um, honestly, I would put it. Do I? Th I think I made it overrated Brock and Rock just a bit because of bias. I think I'm gonna move it down to the very top of fire. Uh, yeah, that that feels more right. It wasn't again. It wasn't the best match on the card, but yeah, back to Punk and Hardy. What a match! What a story! What a way for Jeff to go out. Now we go back down to the very bottom of this tier list. This match was one of the most baffling booking decisions in WWE history. Without question, why the hell did the Nexus lose this match? 
why you had a bunch of potential mega stars on your hands and you had John Cena take a DDT on concrete just for him to power up, go super Cena mode and beat everybody in that ring. It's just one of the most baffling decisions ever. This 100% belongs in Asseline. It's not as bad as Diesel and Mabel, but it is bad. And and the booking decision at the end was horrible. Shame on you, WWE. And honestly, I love them, but shame on you, John Cena, for changing this story. Because the Nexus had so much potential. Had probably the greatest debut in Raw history. Had a honestly maybe had a better debut than the Shield. It's just what a bag fumbled, bro. What a fumble of a bag. So now we got Cena and Punk with Triple H as a special guest referee. Um, this was after their Money in the Bank 2011 match, which obviously is one of the greatest matches of all time. This one is a very good match, but not nowhere near that tier. Uh, I would put this above Cena Edge. I'd put him some light. It was a very good match, uh, very confusing finish. And then, ooh, should I move it down because of what happened after the match? Because you had Del Rio's cash in, Kevin Nash attacking Punk, basically basically deflating the summer of Punk, to be honest. It's just, mm, I don't know. Y'all let me know in the comments if I should bring it down for that. But I'm for the match itself, I think I'm going to put it in some light. Uh, because when we go to 2013, I'm going to include the post-match stuff into it. I think it's only fair for me to move it down just a bit. Yeah, I can't put it above those Cena Orton or Cena Edge. It's just that that finish brought it down. So now we got Triple H and Brock Lesnar at SummerSlam 2012. Um, this was a match where they teased Triple H retiring. And what a joke because nobody really believed Triple H was going anywhere. They tried to sell it like he was done. Nobody believed that. Just, just, just stop. But... Um, the match itself was a very solid brawl. It, nothing nothing groundbreaking or crazy happened here. It was just a very solid match. I don't think it should have been the main event. Probably should have been uh, the triple threat for the WWE title. But, of course, Punk didn't main event very many pay-per-views as WWE champion. But, again, uh, I would say this is very solid. I would put this one in probably the very... Let's just put it in the middle of some light. It wasn't bad at all. Just very, very, just thumbs up. Nothing crazy. Just that's it. That's my reaction to it. <laughs> now we get to what I think is John Cena's greatest SummerSlam match of all time. It is John Cena versus Daniel Bryan with Triple H as a special guest referee for the WWE Championship. And the match itself, Bryan made Cena look like one of the greatest in-ring performers of all time and then cena's character work was it just it lifted up brian as well brian shined in this match he won clean as a freaking whistle and of course the iconic finish of triple h stabbing brian in the back orton pinning brian to win the championship cashing in money in the bank what a moment and what it led to was Again, one of the greatest storylines of all time. So I think it's only right for me to go ahead and put this one in the goat tier for sure. There's anything less. And I think, honestly, I'm going to put it at the very top of the goat tier. I don't know. I don't know. If people may disagree with me on that. I, I, I don't care. I don't care. So now we got the destruction of Super Cena, the night where Super Cena officially died. Uh, Brock Lesnar versus John Cena, SummerSlam 2014, where Brock Lesnar completely picked apart every bit of John Cena. 16 German suplexes, three F5s, good night. This, I don't, I don't care. This has to go in the GOAT tier for what it did for Brock Lesnar. And this is exactly how they should have treated Brock coming out of cracking the streak. Without question, this is how they should have done it. And they did it right. Just, wow, what a match. And, like, not even just, like, match quality, but what, what it did. Fantastic. I don't even care. This is, this is is That's goat tier for me. Now we get the meme of a match, Brock Lesnar versus The Undertaker. And, honestly, <laughs> it's just so weird. And then the finish, 
But, you know, you had the, the spot with Brock and Taker both sitting up and laughing at each other, which, you know, obviously iconic for what it is because it's so funny. But then you had the finish of Taker tapping out clearly on, on camera and then the timekeeper ending the match, even though the ref didn't call for it. So the ref goes and is like, yo, I didn't call for the I didn't call for the bell. I didn't see the tap out, even though we all saw it. And then Taker, I guess, was trying to turn heel, low blows, uh, low blows Brock Lesnar. And re they restart the match. Taker locks in the Hell's Gate. Brock, t uh, not taps out, but passes out. Very weird. Very weird way to follow up on the ending of the streak. I just, I can't, I can't put it any, any higher than the bottom, well, not the bottom, the, the top of mid. It's just very funny with that one spot. That one spot honestly lifts it up a lot. But yeah, that finish was not it, bro. Not it at all. I accidentally forgot to include Brock Lesnar versus Randy Orton at SummerSlam 2016. But honestly, I'd put it in the Aseline tier. Just, it was so dumb what they, what they how they handled that. It could have been great. It was honestly a dream match for me. And then just to have Randy laying there bleeding. Just, eh, was not a fun rewatch for me personally. Now we got possibly the greatest fatal four-way in WWE history. We have Brock Lesnar, Samoa Joe, Braun Strowman, and Roman Reigns. Dude, like carnage. That's the best way I can describe this match. Absolute freaking carnage. You had four big boys just going at it. What, 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 what did Big E say? <laughs> big, big meaty men slapping meat was this match, bro. What a match. What a car crash. Just, if you haven't seen this one somehow, go watch it. It is well worth your time. Go watch it right now. I'm 100% putting this in the goats here. I don't I don't care. I, I don't care. Uh, where do I put it? I think we'll rearrange the goats here as as we go. I might I might change my number one, but we'll talk about that at the end. Now we have Lesnar Reigns match number one thousand five hundred at SummerSlam twenty eighteen, and honestly, I liked it at the time because Brock Lesnar was no longer the Universal Champion, and we finally had a full time champion on the show, even though that didn't end up lasting long. But the match itself was very basic. I'm gonna put this. At the very, I'm gonna put this above nine, uh, 1989. But again, the match itself was weird. You had Strowman on the on the outside with the, uh, Money in the Bank, and then for some reason Brock decided to go focus on him, which led to him getting pinned by Roman, speared and then pinned by Roman. Which again, thank God Roman won. But yeah, just nothing, nothing here. Just a five minute basic match with a bunch of finishers. So I'm going to sit back, honestly, because my back is starting to hurt. But now we got Brock Lesnar versus Seth Rollins at SummerSlam 2019. And honestly, I'm going to put this one at the very top of the fire tier. It was one of those matches where the crowd went going in, was booing Seth Rollins. They had turned on him after a whole bunch of bad booking as champion. And he had got cashed in on by Brock. And nobody wanted to see him as champ again. But by the end of the match, he had won everyone back over what a moment it's just that to me was the match where i was like okay seth rollins really is as good as everyone says he is he's just he's one of the greatest of all time in my books very underrated very reliable just seth rollins is the best and brock did his thing sold for him made him look like a million bucks i'm definitely putting this one in the fire tier it what a match. What a match. Now we got a match that is really saved by its aftermath. It, well, its immediate aftermath because if it was just a match, it, the match itself, I'd personally easily put this in the Asseline tier. It was Braun Strowman versus uh, The Fiend Bray Wyatt at SummerSlam 2020. Having no crowd didn't help this match. It was a very boring brawl with a bunch of spots that honestly didn't entertain me at all, even on a rewatch. I just, it wasn't it. But. The return of Roman Reigns at the end, turning heel finally after we had begged for it for I don't know how many years. Um, having Roman as a heel finally was what saved this entire match here. I would put it just I can't I can't justify above the mid tier. Uh, 
probably put it at the bottom of the mid tier, but Roman's return saved it from being at the very bottom tier because oh, that match was hard to get through. So now we got John Cena versus Roman Reigns at SummerSlam 2021. Um, I don't know how I feel about this match, honestly. I didn't know how I felt about it when it happened, and I really don't know how I feel about it now. But I think I'm going to put this one somewhere in the middle. So I'm going to put it in some light. It was basically the same match they had at No Mercy some years before, um, but with Roman as a heel and Cena as a face. So like the the face heel dynamic made sense then. But honestly, just a very basic match. Nothing, nothing too crazy. It was really built off its uh its storyline. So for what it was, not a bad match, but nothing crazy memorable there for me if you have made it this far i appreciate you very very much we are at the very last match it is last year's main event brock lesnar versus roman reigns but before i talk about this match i want y'all to drop in the comments if you've made it this far hashtag rated m gang bro i appreciate you for making it this far um so now brock roman there was a freaking tractor that that alone justifies it being in the goat tier. That 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 alone has to put it in the goat tier. There was a freaking tractor in a wrestling match, <laughs> and it was the perfect way to cap off their feud. I never want to see another Brock Roman match again, personally. But for what this was, <laughs> I will I will never get tired of rewatching this match. Fantastic, absolutely goat tier. Brock and Roman, what a way to go out. Some people would argue this is their best match. I think their very first match is still their best match, but this could, I wouldn't disagree with any. Well, I wouldn't argue with anyone that says this one is it. So there you have my rankings for every single SummerSlam main event, bro. Um, personally, I still think Brian Cena is the greatest one. You can argue Bulldog and Brett. I know a lot of the uh, the British viewers would say so, and I respect that this match was that match was fantastic, man. But yeah, I would I would personally say Cena Bryan is the greatest SummerSlam main event of all time. But y'all drop in the comments again. Let me know what y'all think is the greatest SummerSlam main event in your mind, and what is the worst. If you don't say Diesel versus Mabel, I got a lot of questions for y'all. But no, like, comment, share, subscribe. I appreciate y'all for being here. See you on the next one. Road to 10K. Peace.